Mariano Fortuny, Madrazo. Mariano Fortuny was one of the first was one of the first European modern artists to display a conscious interest in Minoan Crete, although he never went to Crete. His Minoan inspired uh, works, which he called Knossos cards, were first produced in 1906, imitating drawings and photographs of vases and larnacas published by the archaeologists who were bringing to light the Minoan civilization in the island of Crete. But who is Mariano Fortuna? Mariano Fortuny Madrazo was born in Granada, in Spain, in 1871 to Orientalist painter Mariano Fortuny Marsal and Cecilia de Madrazo. After his death, his father's death, he moved to Rome and then to Paris. But his true home was Venice, where he established himself in 1889 and where he died in 1949. He lived in Palazzo Pesaro Orfei, eventually known as Museo Fortuny, that you see here. Mariano Fortuny was both painter and photographer, excelling in lighting and stage design, but from 1906 he was mainly devoted to textile production. He worked in unfrequent Berlin and Paris, the early 20th century's two avant-garde cultural capitals that attracted many intellectuals and artists from a variety of places. In Berlin, he met the American pioneers of modern dance, like Isadora Duncan, Ruth Saint Denis, in Paris, he worked both as stage designer and couturier, and he collaborated with modern fashion designers such as Paul Poiret. And then, in 1913, he opened an atelier on the Champs Elysees that you see here in Paris. It is plausible that this hint is his interest in Minon Crete started in Paris, the capital of Cretomania, where many artists were involved in the reception of Minon Crete. As couturier, Fortuny invented an innovative pleating process for silks and created velvets, brockets, and tapestries. But his famous most famous creations are the Delphos robe and the Knossos scarf. The Delphos gown is a monochrome pleated silk robe for which Fortuny was inspired not only by the chariot of Delphi, after which it was named, but also by the well-known archaic Greek Korai. Now let's move, let's move to the Knossos scarf. What is the Knossos scarf? The Knossos scarf is a large silk show, rectangular in shape, four meter by one meter large, and printed with a variety of colorful Minoan inspired motifs. On his Knossos scarves, Fortuny reproduced Minoan motifs from books and academic journals published by the archaeologists working on Crete at the beginning of the 20th century. He got, he got most of, the, of these books in his rich library at home, in Venice. In his notebooks, preserved at the archive of the Fortuny Museum, he wrote that he was inspired by vases with flowers and seaweeds observed in 1907 book by Angelo Mosso, entitled Escursione del Mediterraneo e gli scavi di Crete. But in his notebooks, we also found some sketches that show some minor motifs he copied from Arthur's Evan 1906 paper, The Prehistoric Tombs of Knossos. You see here in this sketches, but also what he wrote. So we know that he, uh, he used the prehistoric tombs of Knossos as an uh, inspiration source. For his creation, he reproduced motifs depicted on vases and frescoes found at Minoan sites, so especially uh, in the tombs of Isopata and Zafir Papua, Papura near Knossos, as you see here, and also here, other sketches. But he, he also used other vases uh, from Palekastro and Festos. Palekastro, you see this. Uh, us that we will see later too, and from Festos. So other uh, sites were uh, excavated by other archaeologists on Crete. So for his Knossos scarves, he mainly used minor floral and abstract motifs, as well as marine motifs, such as the octopus, the organauts, and the seaweeds. So let's see some examples. You see here, for example, the spiral decoration of, the, of this jug that is the same 
uh, it was used for, uh, by, by Fortuny to create the, the frame of this Knossos car. You see here the papyrus flower printed on this amphora from the royal tomb of the Isopat Necropolis near Knossos, which was used to create the main decoration, you see, in the Knossos car. You see the lilies depicted on this vase, in this vase from Knossos, which are copied to create the radiating motif at the center of the Knossos car. Then you see the plants from uh, a Knossos vase and the stylized motifs both used on, uh, on this uh, Knossos scarf. And you see also the octopus painting on this vessel from Palekastro, and which is printed on the lower part of the Knossos scarf. So his special interest in natural elements such as flowers and plants and abstract motifs reflects the predilection of the early 20th century Art Nouveau artists for the natural environment and for abstract patterns. The paradoxical analogies between Mainon art and Art Nouveau stimulated Fortuny and other modern art artists to use the Mainon motifs to produce modern creations. Indeed, Fortuny shared the same interest in Mainon Crete with contemporary artists working in Paris, such as uh, the Russian Leon Baxter, uh, Nicoletta Mumiliano, about, about him before. But for Duny's creation of the Knossos scarf enters into the spirit of the times, not only for its printed Mainon inspired decoration recalling Art Nouveau, but also for the design of its scarf. The choice to produce a large and multi purpose veil reflects the fascination with veils, shawls, and clothes shared by contemporary artists. The Knossos scarves recall also the large silk veils used by the American pioneers of modern dance working in Berlin and Paris at that time, as Isadora Duncan that you see here, Loya Fuller, but also Ruth Sandini. The veil dance made famous by Loya Fuller was performed also by Ruth Sandini during her exotic dances virtually inspired by Egyptian, Indian and Japanese examples. And we know that during the official presentation of the Fortunic Nassau scarves, in Berlin on the 24th of November 1907, uh, his Mainon inspired Knossos scarf were presented by the American Ruth Sandini. We do not have pictures of this event, but we have one picture of Ruth Sandini wearing a Knossos scarf. And we have also two remarkable papers written by two journalists who attended the event. The first, uh, the first paper is the Schleier des Mariano Fortuni, written by the German reporter Max Osborn in the National Zeit uh, newspaper. And the second, uh, entitled Mondanità Internazionale, was composed by the Italian journalist Antonio Borgese in La Stampa newspaper. So thanks to these papers and thanks to the pictures we have of women wearing Nassau scarf, we can answer to the following question. How was the Knossos scarf worn by women in the 20th century? First of all, we have a picture of the first appearance of the Knossos scarves in 1906 when they were presented in Paris during the inauguration of the private the theater that Fortuny built for the Comtesse Martin de Berg. And you see here how, how the Knossos scarf was, was used. It was wrapped entirely around the body like an Indian sari. It was wrapped only around the hips, as you see on the top, in order to, cre to create a hide belt, which recalls that of the Japanese kimono. But it was only used, also used to envelop the dancer body on the partial. We have also other pictures. These, uh, these are pictures made by, uh, take, taken by Fortuny to a model in uh, his atelier. And we, and we, we see that the, the scarf covers both the head and the arms of the model. And we have also these pictures uh, at, uh, at the exposition of Nossos scarves at the, at the Atelier Fortuny. And uh, you see here that it can, use, it can be used, could be used as, a, as a, an Arabic bornus or as the dresses were uh, worn on Greek and Roman statues. We have also these, and I would like to uh, to comment, to, to, to write, to, sorry, to, to read what Antonio Borgese wrote about 
these uh, uh, these scarves. He said, "Do you see what can Venetian women do of their scarves? In how many harmonies? Sometimes energetic, sometimes sad, sometimes languid, sometimes provocative. It can fall on the shoulders and sway around the hair. This to, to show how many different ways the Shikmasu scarf was used. And I want to finish this presentation." Uh, reading uh, this uh, comment of Antonio Borgese in the, in the paper that he wrote in the occasion of the, present, the official presentation of the Knosso scarves. Knosso Fortuni, do you know why? Because Fortuni has inspired neither by Paris nor by Vienna, but by the island of Minos. This mysterious island where Angelo Moss discovered the roots of European civilization is capable of all the surprises even to teach with the fragments of the culture 10 centuries prior to Christ, the art of dressing to the ladies of the 20 centuries, 20 century after Christ. I would add also to the ladies of the 21st century. <laughs> Thank you for your attention.